hi Tana Brene here and welcome back to my channel <laughs> what was that <laughs> what was that all right welcome back to my channel so today I decided to do like a countdown of just ways you can spend quality time with your mate after having children um I felt like this is important because when we first had Julian I spent a lot of time like looking up stuff like this because it's especially because I breastfed so it was hard to like carve out time for each other. Um, and especially as newlyweds, I think it's extremely important to get quality, especially because it's still COVID. I know y'all want to believe quarantine COVID and stuff is over. It is not. I'm still wearing my mask and my face looks like it, but that's okay. Um, so going to be a short list. It's only five things. So we're going to go ahead and get started. If you like anything I say in this video, go ahead and give me a like, comment, subscribe to my channel, whatever you want to do. And... Let's get into it. All right, the first thing on the list is date nights. Um, it's really important to try to carve out some date nights um, just as a way to <laughs> spend quality time with your partner. Um, and as a parent specifically, I know that that can be hard, especially if you guys are working. So I do recommend short versus long date nights. So let's say for example, if you can't carve out, let's say you get a babysitter or your, whoever decides to watch the child for you. Excuse me. If you can't carve out time to go to the to your favorite restaurant for dinner and then go get dessert from another place afterwards, go have drinks. Because sometimes dates can stretch on for hours. If you can't do that, make small date nights for stuff that you can do. So, for example, let's say you have a grandparent who's like, oh, I can keep the child for two hours. Let's say if you factor in doing your hair, doing your makeup, finding an outfit, that's not a lot of time. I got an hour, two hours, okay? So if you're going out to dinner, you usually need at least two, at least two hours, because that gives you an hour to get ready and drop your child off if you do it fast. Get to the restaurant, hurry up and eat your food, come back home. But for the most part, two hours is not that long. When you factor in children, it's not that long. But it's long enough for a quick little picnic date. It's long enough for a quick movie date. Like, let's run and see this movie. It's only an hour and 20 minutes long, hour and 30 minutes long. We in, we out. We could drop the baby off on the way there, run to the show, pick the baby up on the way home, go back home. But it still gives you time, whether it's a short one or a long date, to get quality date time in, which is extremely important. It's extremely important. On the other hand, if you have that time to get your makeup put on and get your hair combed and done, find something nice to wear, shower, all that stuff, your mate does as well, you take the baby, come back home, whatever. Take advantage of that. If you do not, you have to find time to carve out those little short dates. If you can't go to dinner, let's go get ice cream. And you can go, like, I know that you think, oh, but that's, that's like a cheap, usually it's like the, the teeny bopper dates is what, what I consider them. Like, you're not going out for a long, full appetizer, meal, dessert, dinner with drinks. But it's enough for you to get like a little, I would have did this in high school type of date in. So I could go grab some ice cream real quick. We can go to the park and have like a little cute picnic real quick whatever the case may be we can go to the movies real quick and that way you can still get that time in it's a short date or a long date depending on which one you can do but you still give yourself that opportunity to get that time in all right the next one is just to try to find something that you guys enjoy doing at home so for myself and andre we try to have movie nights and uh, or TV show nights at home. So if it's a show that we both like to watch, we'll watch it together, like Power. So right now we're on book three, Raising Canaan. We'll watch that together. Um, if it's a movie we're both interested in, we'll wait till Julian goes to sleep to watch it. So if Julian goes to bed between, Julian usually is in bed between eight to 9.30, up in there somewhere, so after he goes down, we will watch that movie together. Um, 
So just things like that. Sometimes we'll have like random game nights. So, oh, you want to play Taboo? Oh, you want to play Jenga? Or you want to play Monopoly? Whatever the case may be, it, it's just like something really, really quick. Well, Monopoly is not a quick game, but you get it. It's like you don't have to leave the house to be able to have that bonding time. And it gives you that moment to kind of like regroup and connect with each other again through whatever that shared thing that you like to do is. Watching TV shows, watching movies, um, whatever it is, it's just that moment between you and your partner. Not necessarily for you to talk about your child, not, not for you to talk about what your other family members got going on, but just for you two to spend time with each other and kind of bond over something that you two enjoy as a couple. The next thing on my list is catch-up sessions. And what I mean by catch-up sessions, Andre and I, we talk every day, obviously. But I want to say maybe like two to three times a week, every other day, maybe. We will have like sit down, check in conversations. Like, how are you doing today? I noticed this morning that you were a little upset or you seemed a little frustrated. Is everything okay? And we've been doing this since before we got married, since before Julian. Um, and that's the time to like, when I ask Andre, how are you doing? And when Andre asks me, how are you doing? We want a genuine, honest answer. And we'll take that time to kind of like dissect whatever that situation is. And you shouldn't treat your spouse like your therapist or your mate like your therapist. But I do think it's good to communicate with them what you're going through. Because they're the ones who have to deal with you on a day-to-day -day basis. So we do kind of sit down by, dang, if it's me, man, I posted this video on YouTube. It only got so this many views. And I felt like it was a really good video. I'm really upset. And Andre will say, well, you know... I like the video, but maybe you should have tried it this way. And it just gives you that time to kind of like to bond with each other and to regroup, come together, talk about strengths and weaknesses that you may be feeling that day. And it gives a person the chance to pick up that slack. So if I'm having a really, really good day today, but I can tell that Andre's mood is off. If I don't say, hey, baby, are you all right? I'm never going to know for sure that his mood is off because he hasn't said it. Yeah, I can sense it, but it's important to verbalize those thoughts and it's important to just be able to communicate. So why it's not, while it's not like quality time-ish in the terms of like a date night, it's still that moment for you guys to connect and it's still that moment for you guys to bond over something um, and get, get a chance to get out whatever you're feeling, even if it's towards each other. Or maybe you just don't feel like being a parent that day, which is real. That's reality. Sometimes you could just be exhausted because your child was up at three o'clock in the morning and you the one who had to get up with them. So you may need to sleep in until noon as opposed to getting up at 8 a.m. with them to make breakfast. Like whatever the case may be, it gives you that chance to kind of have those conversations and have those moments honestly and intimately. Intimacy and sex are not the only ver sex is not the only version of intimacy they're not mutually exclusive being able to have those real conversations of intimacy as well and sometimes that's all you need you may not need to go on a date sometimes you need to just be able to tell the person i feel really crappy today and here's why and you have to be able to be honest and have those conversations and check in with each other to to clear that from your mind don't treat your spouse like your therapist but you have to be able to have those moments of reality with them. Next thing on our list, my list that I like to do is cooking. Now, Andrea and I do not cook together that often. Um, but, because our kitchen's small in our apartment, but we do always try to cook together when it's a holiday. And that's our little thing. So if it's Thanksgiving, if it's Christmas, if it's Juneteenth, if I'm cooking for like Valentine's, usually Valentine's Day and Sweetest Day, we order either order out or we go eat out. But for those types of holidays where you're cooking, if you cook for Easter, Easter, um, we like to do it together. Just as like, it, it's always fun. <laughs> you know, it's relaxing. Um, and it's just, it's really calming to be able to share those types of memories with your spouse. Um, especially now that we have a child, Julian is always in and out. So we do have to give him a snack to occupy his time so we can get the food done. But 
it's it's really relaxing it's really therapeutic it's really calming and i absolutely enjoy it i love clicking with andre during the holidays um it's not like i said it's not an everyday thing that we do but we do love to do it and then the last thing on my list it's gonna shock you but it's time apart and whatever that i'm not saying that you have to physically be apart but you have to have time to yourself and time to reflect and time to think about what you want your relationship to be so that you can bring those feelings back to your relationship i'm not saying you have to voice it but let's say you think about man i feel like yesterday could have been better for us as a couple what did i contribute if anything that made yesterday crappy all right you know what i think this 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 and this so you know what i'm gonna come in wednesday and i'm gonna be so different and you can't do that all the time when the other person in that situation with you is always with you. It's really, really hard to be able to have your own thoughts and own feelings. Group think is a thing. Group think is a thing. So getting some alone time and spending time by yourself, it allows you those moments to be like, oh, I can breathe. Especially when you have a child because sometimes your life can be so consumed with your child you miss out on the fact that you have a partner. You miss out on the fact that you have a, a mate who wants to experience certain things with you. Um, and so time apart from everybody can force you to come back into that partnership stronger, better, smarter, wiser, more involved um, in that in dynamic as a whole. But that's it for this video. Just a little cute, little quick, short video. If you guys have any other tips that you like to do to create intimacy or quality time within your relationship having after having children, leave it down below. Let me know. If you don't agree with something I said, let me know. If you agree with something I said, let me know. Like, dislike, whatever you want to do to this video, share it with your friends on your other social media platforms. And I'll talk to you guys in the next one.